of Israel. How many tribes of Israel? What's the name of the fourth tribe? Judah. What did Yahweh choose Judah to do? How long? And how long is forever? Well, who is Judah today? What did Yahweh choose you to do? How long? Yahweh chose who? Yahweh chose who? If you don't know that, What color is Judah? Black What did Yahweh choose black Judah to do? To be the ruler. How long? Forever. And who is Judah? We are. What did Yahweh choose you to do? To be the ruler. How long? Forever. Yahweh chose who? He chose me. Yahweh chose who? He chose me. If you don't believe that, you won't say that. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord Yahweh, all ye lands. Serve the Lord Yahweh with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord Yahweh, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord Yahweh is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Psalms 47. Psalms 47. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God Yahweh with the voice of triumph. For the Lord Yahweh, most high, is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, Selah. God Yahweh is going up with a shout, the Lord Yahweh with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises unto God Yahweh, sing praises, sing praises unto 
our king. Sing praises for God Yahweh is king over all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. God Yahweh reigneth over the heathen. God Yahweh sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God Yahweh. He is greatly exalted. Welcome to International Headquarters for Hebrew Israelites. The children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the children of Israel, the children of the Most High, Yahweh Himself. Welcome to the nation of Yahweh, where the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, the word of Yahweh is taught. There are those who have said that the Old Testament is dead. There are those who say that it doesn't count anymore. Well, if the Old Testament is dead, then look at us. For we are the Old Testament and we are being resurrected and we are very much alive and since we live the words of the Old Testament look and compare our works and you will see that our works prove the Old Testament is very significant and is something to be reckoned with. For we are living the Old Testament as well as the New. And the fact that we live the Old means that we go from the beginning. Anyone who says the Old Testament does not count is saying that the Creator doesn't count, that the beginning doesn't count. For I read from the Old Testament, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, the Son Himself created heaven and earth. Not the Father, but the Son created the heavens and the earth. Maybe that's why there are those who want to discount the Old Testament. Because when the Son comes on the earth, If you deny the Old Testament, you deny his beginning, his works of old. He would be incomplete. What can be more important than knowing what the Son of Yahweh did in the beginning? These are my works from the beginning. I am Yahweh Ben Yahweh. And I created the heavens and the earth and all that is in them. That's the work of the Son of Yahweh. And it's unethical to deny reality. Yeah. 
thus my subject tonight, the continuation of ethics from the Old Testament. One day we'll get to the new, but right now we're dealing with the old, which is new. If you do not understand the old, then when you first understand it, it's new to you. There's no such thing as the word of Yahweh being old. In terms of not being important, old in time, it depends on whether you got it or not. <laughs> children of God, the children of the Most High know that a thousand years of your time is but a day with the Creator. Glory. Isn't that beautiful to know? In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verse 29, It would be so good if you had a certain kind of heart in you. It would be a blessing if you had the kind of heart that would cause you to fear me and keep all my commandments always. If you did, it would be well with you. And it would be well for your children forever. When you look at America today, you see unethical practices. Well, maybe you don't know what ethics means. Ethics is a subject you need to look up. Ethics is a subject that Occasionally it was taught in college, but almost never taught in grade school or high school. And ethics is a subject that was almost never taught in the so-called black colleges, which means you didn't go to those other kind anyway, basically, as a people, until recently. And by the time you started attending, ethics as a subject no longer time. So ethic becomes a word that you're unfamiliar with. And even when you go to the dictionary and look up the definition, you will generally settle for simplicity in definitions, which means you never get a complete understanding of the word. You simply take the first sentence Try to remember a part of it and repeat it to someone who may be inquisitive, but never really knowing, nor did you care to know full definitions of any word. It's the way you were taught. Ethics. But first we found out it's a system of moral principles, rules of conduct that's recognized in a group, a culture. It's a branch of philosophy dealing with values relating to human conduct with respect to goodness and badness, rightness or wrongness. And dealing with the motives of the individual in regard to the ends and rewards of the actions of goodness and badness, rightness and wrongness, in regard to ethical, moral principle. And notice that the word ethic includes the word moral, and of course the definition of moral includes the word ethics. And both are from the foundation of the laws of God. Meaning that anyone who says the Old Testament does not count and it contains the laws of God, then it means that 
The enemy of God is saying his laws are no good. Only the enemy of God would say that Yahweh's laws are no good. And if you refuse to teach the laws of Yahweh, as found in the Old Testament, then you are saying moral principles, ethics, learning the difference between good and bad doesn't count anymore. I maintain that any person who would become human would have to not only know the difference between good and bad, right and wrong, but be able to apply the righteous standards of conduct for group living. Without that kind of teaching, you have chaos and anarchy in society. You have dope and drugs and alcoholics and prostitutes without the teaching of right and wrong, good and bad, you have people who sit around and wait for those who are productive to go to work. And their job becomes going into your house and stealing your possessions and feeling like they did God a favor by hitting you in the head on your way home to take what you may have earned while you're at work. That's what happens when there's no ethics. Nothing is sacred when men are without the knowledge of ethics. Nothing is regarded sacred or divine or of value. Then you see human life becomes cheap. When you elect, when, when you have a country that does not teach ethics, then when you elect a person from that group, from that culture, whether he be an actor from Hollywood or a peanut farmer from Georgia, when he is elected into the highest office, you have a man there who has no knowledge of good and bad, right and wrong, and the value of life is cheap. So they become men of war and warmongers and seek to get and take from others because they feel they are physically in war weapons mightier than another. This is the result of no ethics being taught or required. And yet the American government has an ethics Law, ethical conduct, laws for the governance of congressmen. And as long as they're all immoral together, and as long as one doesn't displease the bigger group, he can be as immoral and unethical as he wants. But when somebody in the group decides they don't like what he's doing to them or somebody, they bust him using the laws of God. You go to jail for breaking the laws of God. Because the laws of the country based on the Old Testament. It's in the Old Testament. Life for life. It's in the Old Testament. Thou shalt not kill. So when you go out and kill a man, the state, the government, arrests you. Why? Because you killed a man or a person. So, they say, then, thou should not have killed him. <laughs> you say, so? And they say, we are going to take your life for having done so. We're going to try to give you the electric chair. Hmm? Where do they get that from? The Bible. Well, if the foundation law of the Bible is the grounds for capital punishment, 
when you break the laws of God, then wouldn't it be justice and right for the people who come up under such law to be taught the law so that they would learn to respect the law and honor the law so they could avoid breaking the law? Oh, that were such a hard in my people that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always and be ethical that it might be well with them if they be ethical it would be well with their children forever in Deuteronomy chapter 6 beginning at verse 10 we're dealing with ethics When you know the laws of Yahweh and you keep them, you're being ethical. And if you be ethical, you will inherit land with cities. You don't need a gun for this. All you need is ethics. <laughs> Ethical conduct. Ethics is goodness, rightness, righteousness, right conduct, holiness, sanctification, ethics, Honesty in principle and action, uprightness, being rectitudinal in your mind, striving and working and practicing being honorable, chaste and virtuous. And these are words that we should not only be able to call, but these are words that we must master in order to be able to apply them in our lives. I'm having a good time talking about this because I practice ethics. And I'm rewarded for being ethical. And my practicing ethics, ethical conduct, and teaching you, my disciples, to practice ethical conduct gains respect even from the criminal. And prove that we have power with God and with man. When you practice ethical conduct. Now in Deuteronomy chapter 6, 10 through 25. It is a section dealing with warnings against disobedience. What does that mean? What does that title mean? It means warning against disobeying the laws of Yahweh because that is unethical. In short, warnings from God is being unethical or practicing unethical conduct. Warning. If you obey Yahweh, you'll inherit land that you don't have to fight for. You will inherit cities that you don't have to fight for. And I'm demonstrating it here in Miami and across the country. And any forward-thinking person with any vision can see that I'm bringing this about. With perfect peace, because I'm the Prince of Peace. Read verse 10. And it shall be, 
when the Lord Yahweh thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not. And read verse 11. And houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and wells digged, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. What great blessings. Without the subject of ethics, we would have little occasion to look at these verses in any detail or for any reason. But just think, we have a God, Yahweh. We have Yahweh, our God. She said, thy God. Now, if he's not your God, then he won't be doing this for you. But for all of those whose God he is, he will be doing this for them. <laughs> well, that's like being the president's man. All who are not the president's men don't get what the president's men get. If you're a teacher's flunky, uh, as they say in the public schools, well, if you're an apple polisher, you get certain little privileges. You don't polish apples, you don't get what the apple polisher gets. Sometimes they get to leave the classroom and walk the hall, get a little paddle and run messages back and forth. And see, you didn't polish apples, so you don't get to run up and down the hall. Have a special pass. <laughs> you know? If you're not the pet. Anybody ever saw that happen? In your life? Yes. Well, see, we are Yahweh. Those who obey the will of Yahweh receive these good things from Him. How do you obey His will? Practice ethical conduct. 